Excel's filter function is incredible. It enables you to extract a subset of your data based on criteria that you specify. You can think of it like a lookup that returns multiple matches. It can return a single column of data or multiple columns. And with a clever trick, which I'll show you at the end, it can even return non-adjacent columns and rearrange their order. The filter function is one of the new dynamic array functions available with a Microsoft 365 license. Let's take a look. Before we dive into an example, let's quickly look at the function syntax for filter. The first argument is the array. This is just the range of cells or table containing your values. Then you specify what you want to include with the logical test. And lastly, there's an optional argument in case the filter results in no records. And here you can specify something to return instead of an error. This is the data I'm going to be filtering. And we're just going to start with a straightforward example and build from there. Let's say I only want to return data for the sales department. So we want to filter this data here, not including the headers, where the department equals sales. It's not case sensitive, but I like to be proper. And then if there are no records, I'm going to get it to return the text, no records. And there you can see my filter function has spilled an array of the three results that match my criteria for the department sales. The criteria for my include argument simply returns an array of true or false values. So if I press F9 to evaluate, you can see there's the array of true and false values. The first six are false because they don't match the department name sales. And then the last three are true. And that's how filter knows which rows in this array to return. Okay, let's look at multiple AND criteria. Let's say I want to filter the data for the sales department and where the item is stamps. So we're going to filter this table and my criteria, because I have two, I need to wrap them in parentheses and then each one needs to be inside its own set of parentheses. So opening with two parentheses, and first of all, I want to filter where the department equals sales, close parentheses on that criteria. And then I use the multiplication sign between my criteria open parentheses for my next criteria, which is where the item equals stamps, close parentheses on the second criteria, close it on both criteria arguments. And then I'm going to close it on filter. I'm not going to put in an argument if it's empty. You can see there's only one row that matches both criteria. Now, if we look at how the criteria evaluates one by one, I'm just going to Alt and Enter to put these down onto separate rows so we can evaluate them and see them above one another. So F9 to evaluate that one and F9 to evaluate that one. You can see we're left with two sets of true and false arguments, one for each criteria. And notice we have the multiplication sign between the two. So what happens here is Excel multiplies this false by this true. Now the numeric equivalent for false is zero and for true it's one. So essentially this is zero times one, which is going to equal zero. This is zero times zero, which equals zero. This one here is true times true. So one times one, that one's going to equal one. And that's my only set of criteria that are both true. So that's where department is sales and item is stamps. When we then evaluate these two together, F9, you can see we get our series of zeros and ones. There's our one for the one matching row. And that's how filter knows which rows from this range to return. So that's using two and criteria. Now you can just add more criteria by continuing the pattern. So multiply by another criteria and so on. Let's take a look at all criteria next. Let's say I want to filter the data for the sales department or the item stamps. So again, we're filtering the table and because we've got multiple criteria, we open with parentheses and then again for the first criteria. So it's where the department equals sales, close parentheses on that criteria. Now this is all criteria. So instead of multiply, we use plus here 
open my parentheses from my next criteria, which is where the item equals stamps. Close parentheses on my second criteria, close it on both. And then I'm just going to close filter. I'm not going to put in an argument if it's empty. And then you can see there's lots more results returned. So let's take a look at what's going on here. It's going to Alt Enter to put these down onto separate rows. And then we're going to select the first one and F9 to evaluate. Select the second one and F9 to evaluate. So you can see here we've got zero plus one because my operator here is plus. So zero plus one equals one. Zero plus zero equals zero. Down here we've got one plus one equals two. And if we evaluate both of these, there's my array of ones and zeros. And we even have a two here. That's where both criteria were met. Now filter is going to return any result that's not a zero. So this will be returned, this won't, this will, and so on. Again, just like with the AND criteria, we can add more OR criteria by adding another plus and opening another set of parentheses. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when filter returns no data. So here I want to filter the table where the department equals other. Now there's no department for other. I'm forcing an error here so I can illustrate what happens with the if empty argument. So let's say there's no department if it's empty. Close parentheses and there's my result. So there's no department called other, therefore filter returns an error and I've asked it to just return no department in the event that there's an error. So this is only returning one value but I've got five columns that I could potentially populate. So I can actually return something different for each column. And the way we do that is by wrapping the results in curly braces. So the first column, if there's no department, I want it to say no department. And then comma, the next column is item. So here I want it to say no item. The next three columns are values. So if there's no department and no item, I want it to return a zero for the quantity, a zero for the price, and a zero for the total. Then I just close my curly brace and press enter. You can see it spills the results across the five columns. Now big thanks to fellow MVP Bill Jellen aka Mr Excel for that tip. So so far we've looked at extracting the matching rows from the whole table but what if we only want non-contiguous columns say for item and price? Let's take a look. Here I've got a data validation list that allows me to choose the department and I'm going to link my filter function to that data validation list. I want to return just the item and price for sales. So there should be three items and prices for the sales department. So I'm going to start with filter. Now my array is not my whole table. Remember, I only want the item and price columns. So I can use the choose function, which will allow me to specify the columns that I want in my array. The first argument of choose simply numbers the columns. Now I need to enclose them in curly braces. So I've got two columns, so I need one and two. Close my curly braces on my index number argument. Then I simply say what column is column one. So that's going to be the item column. And column two is the price column. Close parentheses on choose. Next is my criteria. So I want to include where the department equals the department selected in the data validation list here close parentheses and press enter. Now if I choose a different department, it updates although the prices and the list of items are the same for each department. So we can't really tell anything's changing there. However, what happens if I also wanted to return the quantity? Now notice the quantity is in between the item and price columns. So I want to rearrange the order of the columns. Not only are they not contiguous, they're in a completely different order. We can do that by adding another column to choose, so 1, 2, and 3, and then adding the third value, which will be the quantity column. And now I have item price and quantity, and when I choose a different department, you can see I'm returning the results for that department selected in the data validation list. 
Well, I hope you're excited to give the filter function a try. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, remember to give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.